shots of apricot palinka coming right up. Ooh, we've left the dock and it's a beautiful day to be out here. There are two pools in here. One is 36 and the other one is a hot and steamy 40 degrees Celsius. I think if you want the best view, you really need to come maybe 7, 7.30 in the morning, have this whole place to yourself. We don't normally eat a lot of sweets, but if we're gonna have a piece of cake, we're gonna go all in. I honestly think that our impression of Budapest was maybe 10 years out of date. Of course, this city is absolutely beautiful. We've been totally floored by seeing one gorgeous building after another. And it sure is lively, there's no doubt about it. We've been staying in the famous Jewish Quarter and it's definitely party central. And I can see this leads to a jolly time. <laughs> But is it still the low-cost way to experience Europe? Well, based on the amount we paid for our Airbnb, I'm not so sure. Let's find out. We're sharing our highlights from a month here in Budapest. So that covers what we did, where we ate, where we stayed, and very importantly, how much it all cost. And we're gonna give our totally honest, unfiltered opinion. Is Budapest still a low-cost destination or is it just as expensive as everywhere else in Central Europe? Before we get too far ahead of ourselves, if you're new to our channel, let's do some quick intros. So I'm Jillian, this is Stephanie. We've got little Jasper and Huxley down there. The four of us are traveling the world full time and sharing it as we go. Little construction going on. Yeah, I don't know if we're able to walk across. Well, that was probably the shortest bus ride I've ever had. I think it was less than 30 seconds from one end of the bridge to the other, but we made it. We're on the Buddha side of the city. So we're staying over on the Pesh side of the city, but today we wanted to come to the Buddha side because it's just jam packed with amazing sights, including the famous Buddha castle, which is right at the top of this hill. And I think most people will probably take the funicular to the top, which is just behind me. But because it's us, you know, we just have to hike our way to the top. I wasn't expecting this. It's like a lovely little green space over here. And we're already starting to get some view. It was a relatively small hill to walk up, but I can see why people take the funicular because it does look like a lot of fun, even if it is a very short ride. Oh my, it's quite something already. So I think this is an indication of what we're gonna be treated to this morning. With every step that I take, it's just getting more and more grand. So this impressive building here is Buddha Castle and today it houses the National Gallery and it looks like it's got a whole lot of great artwork inside. How can you not feel like a princess when you get to walk upstairs like these? You can just imagine how nice it would have been for royalty to stand here and soak in these gorgeous views. We came here bright and early to avoid the crowds, but guess what? So did a lot of other people. I'll be honest, there is a lot of construction happening here. It's fine, you still get the experience, but if you're looking to capture certain beauty shots, you just have to be aware that there may be some scaffolding up. Oh, wow. This square is absolutely amazing. This church is just wonderful. I think it's in a Gothic style and it's just spectacular. I mean, this whole area, they've done an amazing job keeping it well preserved and I guess that's what all the construction is going on for. So what we're looking at is the Matthias Church, which is very old, it's actually from the 13th century and it was actually used as a mosque for a quick 150 years. And I think what I love the most is the remarkable colorful tiles on the roof. It's really something we haven't seen in too many places in Europe and it's absolutely beautiful. 
Along with all the other tourists, we are concluding our visit here to the whole castle district with the view out of the Fisherman's Bastion. Now you can buy a ticket and actually walk along the top of the bastion and presumably get an even better view. But I think I'm going to be satisfied with the free view that we're going to have on the staircase over here. It's really amazing. So you do get a really wonderful view of the Parliament building just over there. It's a really spectacular building. But I think if you want the best view, you really need to come maybe 7, 7.30 in the morning, have this whole place to yourself. Well, all of that was very hungry work, but fortunately in Budapest, you are never far away from a cafe and a piece of cake. So we don't normally eat a lot of sweets, but if we're gonna have a piece of cake, we're gonna go all in. We have come to the cafe that is the oldest in all of Budapest. Apparently this one used to be a favorite of Empress CC. And we're gonna have, I think, a very decadent little snack. Ooh, yes, please, thank you. Well, this is very exciting. So we're splitting these, so two cakes, two people, but I'm gonna try them both. This one is the very traditional dobos cake or drum cake, which has some layers, I believe, of buttercream, and then the top is kind of a hard shell, and then the whole thing has been rolled in some chocolatey bits. The hard shell resists me. I'm gonna try the cakey portion first. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. It's a very chocolatey tasting layer. It's very moist because it's predominantly just kind of an icing in between. And then this is something that is hard to break. Okay, using my fingers. Mm. Oh, it's like a, it's like a very hard caramel topping on kind of like a wafer. And it's really good, it's really sweet. The whole thing is quite lovely. And then over here, this is the cake that is the most popular from this cafe. And it is really just cream with a lovely kind of a wafer topping. And the cream is supposed to be very light. Mmm. It's so delicious. So it is it is light. It's not too sweet. And it's definitely something that I'm really enjoying because I could probably eat this whole thing quite easily. Mm. We saw just how beautiful the city looked from way up on Castle Hill. Now we want to see it from the water. So today we're heading down to the ferry dock area to take a cruise along the Danube. Okay, an underpass, perfect. Down there, there's a crosswalk. It's not the most pedestrian friendly section of the waterfront, that's for sure. So this is definitely a pretty touristy activity, but we're going to take the first boat of the day, so hopefully it won't be too crowded. Anyway, I think it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Hello, uh, for two? Gate number one. Hello, welcome Hello. Have a oh, nice time. thank you. Oh my goodness. Hello. <laughs> well, this is definitely no hop on, hop off bus. This is a very nice boat. It's very fresh and new and clean, and it feels almost luxurious. And I can't believe how dog friendly Budapest has been. I mean, I was a little worried about the dogs, but we just sauntered on in and everyone had just huge smiles for them. Ooh, we've left the dock and now we've begun our tour of Budapest from the water, from the Danube. The sun is shining, the water is sparkling, and it's a beautiful day to be out here. Oh, thank you. Wow. And I'll take this one. <laughs> thank you. Our ticket for the cruise also includes a glass of sparkling wine. And I would say that this is a pretty nice way to start the morning off. Let's give it a go. You know, it's not as bad as you would think for being a freebie with a cruise ticket. It's actually not bad for, for a breakfast wine. Cheers. Not bad for a Monday morning Prosecco. I 
I know that we just saw the castle up close, but seeing it from a distance like this, you can really see what spectacular building it is. And how amazing is this view of the Parliament buildings from the water? Oh, I think we're arriving at Margaret Island. So this is the main stop on the tour. It's a little island that sits in the, the middle of the river between Buda and Pasht. And we get to stop at the island and we can spend 45 minutes or even longer wandering around and seeing what it has to offer. Well, this is just lovely. So this seems to be a very extensive parkland with all kinds of recreational areas. I mean, people are biking, they're running, they're hanging out, just enjoying the space. And I really don't know if we would have come here if it wasn't for that cruise. So I'm giving top marks to that cruise. We saw the city, we had a little Prosecco, and now we get to enjoy this beautiful green space. It's been very interesting staying in the Jewish Quarter. On one hand, we're learning some of the history, but on the other hand, it is the party district with all kinds of restaurants and bars. So right now we're on our way to have a bite to eat and we'll just see what we get up to after that. I am very excited about this meal we're about to try. So we've had some snacks since we got here. We had the langoche that you saw us have on the very first day. We've had some cakes, but now we're about to tuck into a proper traditional Hungarian meal. Okay, thank you. So dog friendly. There are some ceiling fans and Jasper is terrified of fans. So he started screaming right away. They have parked us in a lovely little table far away from the fans and we can now enjoy a beautiful meal. All right, cheers to eating locally. Oh wow, thank you. Looks so good. So this is a bowl of the famous chicken paprikash and I have been so excited to try it. So we have couple beautiful pieces of chicken here in this quite a deep sauce and then these beautiful little noodles and they look like they're gonna go really well dunked right in this sauce mm. the sauce is quite subtle it's really it's quite tasty it's not hot at all I wasn't really sure what to expect but I think this is from the sweet paprika instead of a spicy paprika and then the chicken is so tender <laughs> <laughs> Look at all of that sauce. And then of course, sour cream. We've been learning that you can't really have a dish without sour cream here. Mm. Wow, that's so good. So pickles are a, an accompaniment to a lot of the traditional foods here. And this is a beautiful spread of pickles. We have some peppers, we have some little cucumber-based pickles, and then we have a little coleslaw. And I'm just wondering what these peppers might taste like. Oh, they're hot. There's a hot pepper. <laughs> it's good. It's not too hot. I can manage. Coming in strong though. <laughs> you guys know that we're not really nightlife people, but we figure we should probably go check out one of the ruined bars that Budapest is so famous for. So that's our next stop. We're heading to actually the most famous ruined bar of all. <laughs> so here we are at the number one tourist attraction ruined bar. And we are here at an unfashionably early hour, but I think that many people here are really comfortable with day drinking, so it's perfectly fine. <laughs> oh my. And we're not the only tourists with a camera. <laughs> sure. Yeah, this is perfect. And and the chair is like the perfect, <laughs> perfect I don't know if they do table service. <laughs> Two shots of apricot palinka coming right up. I always enjoy having a taste of the local spirits. This one I'm sensing already is probably pretty strong. Yeah, it's got that fire water feeling on the way down. But a sweet finish, so apricot, very nice. It smells like alcohol. Ooh, it burns a little, but uh, it tastes really nice. 
even though it's so early, I'm actually glad that we're here in the daytime instead of the nighttime because you can really see all the details. Someone has done an incredible job taking just an abandoned, worn out, run down space and turning it into this incredible meeting place for people. We've got a band playing, drinks are flowing, there's all kinds of creative stuff everywhere. It's very inspired as, a, as an environment. Going to thermal baths is a huge part of the culture in Budapest, and we had quite a few bathhouses to choose from. In the end, we decided to go with one that's supposed to be the most beautiful. It's the Gellert Baths from the early 1900s, and it's done up in a really spectacular Art Nouveau style. It's the Gellert Baths right over there. I feel like I'm gonna be properly inducted into Budapest culture today. house. It's so ornate in here. To the of the violent there we go. I decided to go for the full experience and get a little cabin for changing in. This place is huge and it's just the changing room. Okay, this is our cabin. So it's like a little closet. So technically this is supposed to be for one person, but I understand that even families will use them. So I think it's definitely enough room for two. Wow, just look at this place. This is super neat. Oh, and they've got the roof open too. This is really impressive. There are two pools in here of two different temperatures. One is 36 and the other one is a hot and steamy 40 degrees Celsius. Maybe I'll warm things up with the 36 and then dip a toe in the 40 degree. And here we've reached the outdoor baths and I have to say this has got to be the most beautiful outdoor pool that I've ever seen. There's definitely enough here to keep us busy for the day so we hope you enjoyed our tour and now it's time for us to jump right in the water. Next up is our Airbnb. And to be honest, I still haven't decided whether it was a really great idea to stay in the center of the city or if it was a really bad idea. So on one hand, we have really great access to all of the sites around town. It's very easy to walk anywhere we want to go. And there are lots of great restaurants around here. On the other hand, this really is party central. So it's quite busy, it's quite noisy. And when we go to walk the dogs at say 6.30 in the morning, we're often seeing a lot of leftover from the night before. This is our building here, and I would say it's pretty representative of the buildings in the area. It is a little run down, and I feel like there are not a lot of purely residential units. I think that a lot of the spaces are actually for short-term rentals, so there's a lot of traffic going in and out all the time. Hello. Thank you. I do like to have a positive attitude about all of the places that we stay in, but I don't really think there are two ways about it with this place. It's not very well maintained, so everything is a little falling apart, dirty, just in rough shape. Fortunately, the inside is a completely different story. Come on, guys. Now this, I think, is not bad at all. It is a brand new renovated space. It's been put together with a lot of care, a lot of attention to detail. We've got this great big living room space here. There's tons of natural light. And of course, we've got this absolutely enormous couch that looks like it was made for giants. The kitchen is pretty compact, but it does cover off all the basics, certainly everything we needed to do some cooking while we were here. There's a nice little bedroom in the back. And one of the things that we really appreciated when we arrived were all the small touches. So the host had left some treats in the fridge, including some wine. There were some little chocolates on the bed. So those are the little things that really get those five-star reviews. Now, if you wanna see the complete tour of this Airbnb, including all the little quirks and little details, you can check out our first day in Budapest video where we go through the whole thing. 
All right, down to business. Let's talk costs for our month in Budapest. Of course, the reason we came here was to get out yep. and see the city. So we'll kick things off with entertainment. So for entertainment, we did that really fun cruise, mm -hmm. which I thought was a very good price. It was. I went to the synagogue, and then the two of us went to the bath. So all of that added up to 115 US. Well, that's not bad for months. No. Of course, we rounded that out with a lot of free activities, like going to Castle Hill. Going to Central Market. So on a related note, our transportation. This came in at 65 US, and that actually included our train ride all the way over from Bratislava, which was just $30 for the two of us. Yes. We also took a few cab rides and used public transit. But generally, we were able to walk to most of the places mm -hmm. we want to go to because, of course, we have this wonderful central location. Okay, dining out. This is really, to me, another form of entertainment. It sure is. So we tended to have a snack or a meal out every couple of days. We definitely didn't go out every single day because I think that would really add up here. Yes, we did have some local food, but yeah. we also found we got into Middle Eastern food. There are some excellent Middle Eastern restaurants here. So all of that added up to 325 for the month. Okay. And then of course we spent money on groceries. Yes. So that's another 395 for cooking our meals at home. And I'd say the price of groceries was just a little <laughs> cheaper than what we saw in Prague and Vienna, little. but not really by much. No, not really by much. Okay. So the next category, our Airbnb. This is, I would say, a very nice apartment and it is in an extremely central location. Even so, was it worth a whopping 2400 US a month? <laughs> I mean, that seems incredibly steep to me. In fact, it's the highest amount we've paid anywhere in mm -hmm. four years of travel. That is both true and extremely shocking. And mostly because we came here thinking that Budapest was really going to be a low cost destination. It was going to help us balance out the amount that we were spending in Prague and in Vienna. Right. It didn't turn out to be the case at all. Yeah. Now, of course, we would have paid less if we stayed in a less nice apartment yep. or if we weren't in such a prime location. Or maybe if we were here in the shoulder season or possibly if we weren't traveling with these two dogs. But you know, here we are. <laughs> and I think that helps answer the question of whether Budapest is still a low cost destination. <laughs> Not really. So if you are coming here for a cheeky weekend and what you really care about is the price of beer and the price of street food, sure, yes, maybe it can be a lower cost alternative to Vienna or to Prague. Yeah, but otherwise, <laughs> between the huge amount of tourism here and all the inflation, it really isn't the place to come <laughs> if you're looking to save money. Not at all. So our total for the month came in at a really substantial $3,300. And of course, a lot of that was the cost of the Airbnb. It was. Now, if you're looking for an alternative to the bigger cities in Central Europe, I think we could recommend giving Bratislava a yes, try. Yes, absolutely. It's a lot quieter than Budapest, but I think that's the charm of the place. Although, I'll say we were a little worried about it being too quiet when we first arrived. But you can see for yourself by checking out our next video right over here. Having been to the old towns of Prague and Vienna just in the last few weeks, I have to say this old town of Bratislava, it's a refreshing change. So I'm definitely getting that Europe, springtime kind of vibe. I definitely want to be spending my days on a patio soaking in all this gorgeous architecture. <laughs> 